Alan Girding, and this is Mother Show, the show that's all about Mothership, the sci-fi horror role-playing game by Sean McCoy. Today, we're talking about third-party modules. Ugh, this isn't a third-party module. This isn't even for Mothership right here. We've got a whole lot of these things, but today, I'm gonna cover these two. The rest of these, I've either talked about already, or I'm going to talk about in the future. I like to call these shallow dives, because I'm not gonna do any deep diving, not today. We're just gonna take a quick gander at these two babies. The Drain by Ian Usum. If I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, you should let me know, Ian. <laughs> and The Burning of Carbex by Tim and Trevor Obrumula. Now these are third-party modules, meaning that they're not created by Tuesday Night Games, but typically you can find more about these products and get them from uh, our website. So why am I looking at these two today? They're very different. They're almost opposite. The Drain is very short only about 16 pages. In fact, I think it's exactly 16 pages. Ooh, look, it comes with this little postcard within wheels. This is an image of the location the drain takes place in. It's almost like these individual halos form together as some type of biosphere floating in space. Pretty interesting space station. We'll talk more about that as we get, I'm getting ahead of myself on the back of this and it has this Mad Libs type of postcard. I think this may have been a Kickstarter exclusive since I kickstarted this baby. But the drain is only 14 pages pages, whereas the burning of Carbex is a whole lot of pages, to the point where it isn't even a zine. It doesn't have that classic saddle stitch or the staples. Instead, it has this glue binding. Now, a little behind the scenes action, when you go to print something in a zine format, it has to be divisible by four. So the smallest thing you can get is four pages, which would just be the front cover, the back cover, and then the insides of the cover. But when you go glue binding, there is very very little limitation as far as the page numbers go. Now this is interesting because there's actually some blank pages in the back here. Not sure why, maybe the printer had a specific page count that they had to get for whatever reason and they just didn't quite get there. Maybe they left some pages blank for notes, not sure, but for whatever reason you have a 16 page module versus this one which is over 100 pages. They are very different in length but also density because you have this type of continuum, you have on one side very bare minimum details. There's no hand holding. Instead, it's just like inspiration, little quips, maybe bulleted points, more of an outline of adventure than anything. On the other side of the continuum, what you have is very specific details. This is a lot of hand holding where there isn't a lot of interpretation allowed for the warden or the players, whoever is reading this. These two are great examples of opposite ends of the spectrum. The drain doesn't hold your hand at all. It gives you very minimal details, leaving your imagination to run wild. You as the warden and the players are left to create the details to fill in the blanks. Almost as this Mad Lib suggests. I didn't even think of that. That's kind of interesting that there is this fill in the blank with Mad Libs and the drink. Anyway, but the burning of Carbex, it gives you everything you need to know and more. More information you could possibly need. So if you have questions, the answers should be in this. With that being said, let's dive into these in a shallow way. So the first thing I'm going to do is give a generic overview of the drain and the burning of Carbex that doesn't have any plot spoilers. So the drain is a funnel adventure. So what the heck is a funnel? Funnel is where you create a whole bunch of level zero characters. In fact, this recommends you make 12 to 15 characters for each player. So there's this huge mob the players have and you actually have character creation through attrition, meaning so many of those characters are going to die, it's not until after the funnel that you now have the character you're going to keep. So what characters survive are the characters that you're going to end up playing with. I love this because it really instills this idea, Mothership is highly deadly and you shouldn't get too attached to any of your characters. But the very few, the precious that make it, well those are the ones that are worth talking about. So instead of having this whole backstory ahead of time, you're kind of creating the character from scratch. Pretty brilliant stuff. The Burning of Carbex is pretty nice and organized at the beginning here. The briefing is something you could read to anybody. And then the background, so this is the information that everybody should 
should know. And the synopsis, we should probably not read for a non-plot spoiler because the synopsis gives you the idea of the entire adventure. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and look at the briefing. Now, one issue I do have with the glue binding is you really miss out on the inside margins because they're stuck together. For instance, if we look through this, look at that. See, if you look here, you gotta really uh, spread this baby out, spread out uh, uh, in order to see everything that's in there. That's not too bad, actually. That spread out pretty well. But that's the one issue with glue binding compared to staple or stitching is that the stitching opens up really easily all the way. You can see everything. Look how seamless that is. Whoop. It's like one big image. Whereas with the glue binding, what are we, are we missing something here? I can't even, it looks like they have a hallway right in the seam there. And so I can't see that hallway. Open up, baby. Ugh. And so I got to almost break this thing in order to read what that is. Enough about that. That, the briefing. The Angelus Fabrica station orbiting the mining world Carbex issued an automated distress signal after deploying every escape pod. Four days of communication attempts without response met the persistent distress signal. A nearby law enforcement agency dispatched you to investigate and, if possible, determine the complete evacuation's rationale. Rescue and assist by any means necessary any remaining crew members. Since the police were unable to respond and are low-key tired of reading the stress signal, they're offering 50 kilo credits for the investigation and report, and importantly, turning off the signal. So that's the overall basic premise of the adventure of the burning of Carbex. Of course, when you go to investigate the distress signal, there is going to be a whole bunch of problems as depicted by this beautiful art by Dustin Lincoln. I love this. Look at all these little critters that extends to the back here. Look at this beautiful space station. There's also some good art here. In the back section, there is like a bestiary. If you look here, a whole bunch of good character art. Ooh, that's the same as that. Boop, boop, boop. Let's see what we got. Ooh, get some of this stuff. All right, this is getting to some plot spoiler stuff here because you're gonna see some. Ooh, look at this, here's the activated. So what's going on? What do we mean by activated? Well, it's like there's creatures that are starting to infest people and take over their bodies. Ooh, look at this, coal shade. Some really good, ooh man. Has the attacks here, the combat skill. Got a charging slam attack. Look at this, parasite swarm. Swarming over this space marine. Oh man, that guy's doing Doomed. He's screwed. <gasps> Look at that terrifying creature. That's a coalescence. It's actually just a body full of all these other smaller parasites. Look at that beautiful full color art. Ooh. Art here is done by my business partner, Sean McCoy. You can notice the classic Sean McCoy look to the art here. I love me some Sean McCoy art. He didn't do this. This isn't Sean McCoy. I don't know who did this. This is very gorgeous as well. This looks very Dungeon Crawl classic-y. This is the map. These are the actual rings, the different halos that go down, down, down to the inside, and they're divided into different sections. You can kind of see that says 1A, 4A, so the outer ring is A, the inner ring is B, C, and then finally the center is D. But let's look at some more of Sean McCoy's art. Look at this little advertisement there for Ref Cola by the looks of it, something like that. Man, I don't even know what that is, Sean. What kind of nightmares keep you awake at night, sir? Oh man, that looks like dead body exhaling. Maybe the soul leaving the body. Ooh, a whole bunch of bodies on pikes. Man, I like that picture. That's a pretty good picture, Sean. I like how here is references to the map because they have the little icons here, 6B bunker. So if we look back to here, we can see there's 6B bunker. So here's the picture of 6B. So I like how they have the icons that come up here. That's very pretty, full color. Oh, here's another picture from Sean. Ooh, what the heck am I looking at? I don't know, but I like it. I could see someone getting a tattoo of this. Maybe not. Ooh, look at this mangled hand. What is this thing? Whew. All right, so there was a very shallow overlook. So the drain, you know what? I don't even know. Like this is the big difference here is the Burning Carbex has this nice organized version of the synopsis and background and briefing right away. But the drain, I'm not exactly sure what the adventure is even after having flipped through the pages. Now, since there's only 16 pages, we could go page to page to page and I could show you this entire thing really quickly and easily. 
Truth be told, behind the scenes, I looked at each of these for probably a solid 20 minutes each. So 40 minutes altogether for the two of these, and I'm still not sure exactly what the drain is. Module emulates Dungeon Crawl Classics Funnel Character Generation, which each player pilots multiple zero level characters through a meat grinder. Survivors forged in blood earn their first level. If embraced, a funnel becomes a contest to achieve the most spectacular PC death. Players and GMs bond in murderous collaboration anxiety surrounding character death melted away. PCs become resources to throw at problems rather than precious things to be guarded. And that writing style that I just read is going to be very commonplace throughout the drain. It's almost poetic in its prose, highly verbose with minimal sentence. Mothership Funnel rules tells you class, level zero characters do not have a class. Here it gives you specific stats. You distribute 20, 25, 25, 30 in any order you want. So instead of doing the classic character creation here, it's telling you that you just choose these very basic starting stats for all of your characters. Because if you're going to have 12 characters to begin, you don't want to spend all the time rolling each of those characters. Because even though in Mothership, it only takes you about five minutes. Now I know this is zero edition. We're supposed to be showing first edition. But even in zero edition and first edition, it only takes you about five minutes max to make a character. Well, if you're doing that 10 times, well, that's 50 minutes. That's way too long. So here it just enables you to make a whole bunch of characters really quickly because you're throwing them into the grinder anyway. But here's the crime. Roll once determining your conviction and return personal effects. So you are criminals and in a running man style you're fitted with collars that will explode if you get too far from one another. We'll get into that later. But let's suppose we'll say uh, 55. You rolled a 55. You are imprisoned for terrorism and the object that you have is a bottle of shampoo. Six ounces worth. There's some pretty funny ones in here. Domestic insufficiency, an android crime, desecration of corpse, Ugh. fortune telling. Apparently fortune telling is illegal. So if you survive, that's when your character progresses to level one. These are just some basic material. For instance, if you rolled a 55 on this one, you have a gas mask. So here is the basic description of the funnel. And here's where you get the idea of this being more poetic without holding your hand. It's very minimal, but really gives you a lot of flavor. Simple farmers of the rotating colony ship within wheels starve as bargain instacart crops wither on the vine. They turn to faith and ritual, concocting visions of a hell on earth from half-remembered traditions and commercialized lore. Bunker doors seal as their beacon calls upon believers to consecrate synthetic soil with holy blood. So when I read that, I think, oh wow, that sounded really good. But at the same time, what? What does that mean? What does this mean? They turn to faith and ritual, okay, concocting visions of a hell on earth from half-remembered traditions and commercialized lore. All right, moving on. The Third Testament. So right now, I don't even know what the Third Testament is. The rumors of the Third Testament fester in occult circles. Pirate stations relay a fuzzy, crackling broadcast that stands hair on end and sets hearts racing. It plays at the bedside of the sick and dying, compliments rituals and backs sermons, coordinates first hit hackers, boards, then round conspiracy broadcasts, and gossips mags. Gossip mags. Rumors of local military action confirmed. Believers saddle up, making pilgrimage to the source of the Third Testament. I still don't know what the heck the Third Testament is. What is the Third Testament? What is going on in this story? What, what's going on inside the wheel is the name of this colony ship. I, I got that. A massive space battle rages around the wheel. The full force of corporate might brought to bear, smashing through the debris field. The Preco penal transport ship Charity takes heavy fire while landing at a docking bay on within wheel's outer conical rim. Here we have kind of the start of our story. For some reason, there is a battle going on around the outside of the within wheels. You and your entire entourage of characters have crash landed on the outer rim of the within wheels. So situation inside the wheel. Prison soldiers, that's us, and civilian pilgrims spill in spasmatic bursts from the hangar bay doors into the carnage of a battle in stalemate. Countless independent interests scramble over dead fields and abandoned structures to reach the command center, page 10, and locate the third testament transmission's origin, 
isolated groups grind each other to pulp in their frenzy to claim the holy prize and prevent others from doing so. Horrors lurking outside command mop up any scraps filtering through. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. This is dense without being dense. There's a lot going on here and I'm not sure exactly what. For instance, what is this battle? What is command center? What is the third testament? But what I believe the drain is asking me to do as the warden learning this game is to try to fill in the blanks the best I can. It's almost as if I'm an investigator and I'm trying to piece together exactly what the story is, what are the motivations. And I think not having all that information spoon fed to me really tickles my creative taint where I get to fill in the blanks here. I get to figure out, well, what's this battle over? I, I don't know exactly. And why is there a prisoner ship? The PCs, the prisoners of Preco private reform colony drafted into a holy war. Okay, so we're in a holy war. Their mission, reach the wheels command hub, recover the source of the third testament transmission and return it to Preco. There we go. This is what we're looking for. This is very specific. This is telling us what we need to know. Each prisoner is equipped with a tinsel halo, Preco battle uniform, and a command collar. Now here's where it gets fun. This command collar is pretty cool. This is the running man aspect of it. And each battle group, a randomly selected prisoner wears a master collar. Secondary collars explode when they're 20 meters from the master collar. At 50 meters, obnoxious warning beeps begin, and the command collar functionality is unaffected by wearer death, sensitive to detonation if tampered with. So basically, if you like and hear this picture kind of depicts this, someone within the group, and you don't know who, has a master collar. And if you go farther than 15 meters from them, not that far, you're gonna get a beep, and if you go 20 meters, you're gonna blow up. If you're playing with four players and each of them have 10 characters they've created, that's 40 individuals, and they're all gonna be huddled together so tightly as they go through this because they don't want their heads to explode. If you look here, going 20 meters, it explodes. 15 to 20 meters, it beeps, beep, 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 beep. And it says it's not sensitive to death, which means if so, whoever is wearing the master collar, if they die, you gotta drag their corpse or their collar with them. Man, that's brutal. And that is the premise of the drain. It's just pure, brutal, meat grinder. I still don't know what the third testament is. I don't know what the transmission is or exactly what Preco's deal is or what this holy war is, etc. Within wheels, aka the wheel, this is the station that you're on. This little map here. This is the wheel or within wheels. The wheel, bottom of the line, conical rotating habitat decimated by cut costs, a hairbreadth from floating scrap. Barren artificial farmland, cheap synthetic dirt, little more than dust, host dead orchards, rotten crops, bioengineered livestock feeding on unwilling martyrs. Synthetic soil infused with programmable metamaterial can be reconfigured in almost any shape. All right, this is all farmland and we're trying to get into what I believe is 10 D, which is where the third testament is. So you learn more as you travel. Again, I think kind of the unspoken beauty and elegance of the drain is the minimal information it gives you, and it's giving you that information piecemeal. If you were to pull this off the shelf and run it as is without much prep, you'd feel kind of lost. But I think that's okay because that's the way the player should feel. They're lost and they don't even know what the heck they're doing or why they're here. They just know this bare minimal that they're trying to get to the command hub and recover the source of the Third Testament transmission. That's all you really know. All right, what the heck's the command hub? What is this transmission, the Third Testament, what? And then you learn that as you go into these rings and just try to explore. Here's a random encounter table, D10. So if we go with five here, here's hazard suits pour from an unmarked van. D10 table of billboards. The five here is string of conservative signs. D10 is some random radio chatter. Desperate requests for reinforcements. Gunfire closing in. Number five here is buzzing flies. A death rattle. And then we go to the different zones. The furrow trenches. The church. The shackle drop ship. The orchard the collapsed silo, the bunker, the synthetic run, the barn, the amusement park, the crash sleeve. Here's some crash sleeve encounters. Here's the command center, and this is the main goal, the command center and the hub. And then here's pages of enemies, and there is at the back some tables, D100, 10 minutes searching with successful scavenging check or looted from a corpse. And here's a D10 table of equipment caches, and then here's more credits. So that's a very shallow look at the drain. Going into the 
burning of Carbex. Let's read the synopsis. When the station activated a mysterious natural cave's charcoal, it also released something else, which spread throughout the station, mutating the crew and leaving them ravenous. These new life forms are driven to ingest carbon by breathing or eating. They prefer plants, but consumed all the station's accessible plant matter. So here's a timeline broken down. So if you just quickly look at this and you want to know what happens throughout this adventure, it tells you exactly how you win the burning of Carbex. And then here's if you do nothing. You can already see the difference between the drain and the burning of Carbex. Here, lots of questions, a lot of fill in the blank, Mad Lib style. Here, you're giving me everything I could possibly need to know right away in the beginning so I go in with all the knowledge necessary. This is the total outline of everything you need to know before we get into the details. Here, you don't get the details until you're right there in the midst of it. I love how it has this if you do nothing. Again, this is really important, always crucial to have a timing mechanism. If our party members should sit around drinking tea, chatting away their lives, are there going to be consequences? The answer should always be yes. There should always be something prodding your players from going on and on and on. I love it. The Angelus Fabrica Station. And then from this point on, it's probably just going to be nothing but each of these different rooms. And sure enough, tells you what areas you can land on. So if this is the official docking, you would want this to be the first place they describe. Since the ship is docking here, we need to know the docks. And sure enough, it tells you right here. This tells you about exosuit, kind of like the mechanical lifters from Aliens. <laughs> Corridor one, corridor two, these are the areas that correspond to the map we were looking at. Warehouse, what happens here? Corridor four, and then here comes some of this beautiful art interdispersed here. Hannah Harpoon gives you some of the characters, some interesting details about her. She's always felt at home. She also has this hair that can change colors. More details than you need to know. Hannah also has a maintenance key. They put in bold here the key items as if it was a parser based adventure game. So it's letting you know what you're supposed to be looking at. Now, when it comes to graphic organization, this is almost bare bones minimal in that it's just written word. You do get the occasional black box or characters. It tells you what's contained in here. Instead of like rolling on a random table, it tells you very specifically what artifacts are in what location. And that's act one. And then here comes act two, the next steps. Based upon what the players did, this is what goes on. It's almost like a flow chart, if you will. Here's a little glitch. I hate to point this out. This looks like some graphic design error because jump drop, chamber deck one car gets cut off here like they use jpegs instead of pngs with transparency yeah i don't know who did the graphic design or the layout here is the stats for the ship again this is using zero edition rules here's the sediment hill mine another map Mine random encounters if you get to the mine. D100 table. And again, I'm always fascinated if they do the 1 to 100 table or the 0 to 99. And here they're going the 0 to 99. The Adventures of Space Lieutenant. So they even put in a captain's log here. Space Lieutenant learns the hard way that beneath Astra Blue Tango's mercantile veneer is a criminal element with a chokehold on the free market. Then you have the blank pages. There is a lot here. Big adventure. My big love for the burning of Carbex is how everything is laid out in the beginning. I love of this too, how you quote win. And here's the biggest plot spoilers we can give. This is basically the solution to the entire thing. Report the Anglis Fabrica status, deactivate the distress signal, collect thine fat stacks, and leave this nonsense to the authorities. Basically get in, get the job done, bare minimum, and get out. But here, stop the coalescence from spreading and be able to sleep at night knowing you left a malevolent alien corruption to prey on the next greedy mining company to go to Sediment Hill. Or here's another one, completely destroy the parasites or believe that you've completely destroyed the parasites. Wow. Then here's the last one. Capture all the survivors, including those the parasite twisted and mutated, get paid, and then presumably ignore that you made a bad situation much worse, doom these creatures to horrific scientific experimentation, and finally live with the fact that this will likely be used as a weapon in the near future. And that in the first few pages tells you what the rest of the book details. So again, you can see big difference between the drain and the burning of Carbex. I 
think I did a crap job of going through these. I'm not sure if that previewed these enough. Did it get your interest going? Let me know in the comments. I always like it. It helps out the channel when they leave a comment. Definitely, if you like and subscribe, that really helps us out. If you want more information, let me know. Maybe next time I'll do some other adventures. For instance, Gorgonark. Let me know what you thought of this, what you'd like to see more of. And very specifically, if you had to choose between the drain and the burning of Carbex, which would you choose? Thanks for watching Mother Show and TKTV. Bye.